Hey guys, it's Luke Willette here, aka Rick Wilson, as most of you know me online by. Uh, here today to bring you a, a long but detailed update video of my custom audio system in my 2021 GMC HE4. Um, did a video a few months back, I had just done a front sub as well as a monoblock for that, some updated rear fill, new source, uh, sm smallish updates but had big impact and had done a full overview of the truck itself uh, in preparation for my first competition, which is here in a week, uh, which is gonna be SVR 2023. Very excited for it, never been to a comp before. So starting off big, but I'm excited to, to see how I do um, and, and meet a lot of people that I've been interacting with for a while. Uh, but anyways, back to uh, content at hand. So today I wanted to give you guys um, a complete overview of the truck. That includes the, the entirety of the system, uh, what, what it's composed of equipment-wise, how it's wired, um, some custom work that's been done from front sub to A-pillars, mid-range, uh, subwoofer enclosure in the rear, and as well as kind of sound treatment, um, and then some of the uh, uh, key notable pieces, and, and I hope to do a demo video for, from a sound perspective soon once I can nail down a kind of proper recording setup for that. Uh, but anyways, uh, I got my iPhone here today for you guys, and uh, I'm going to bring you through uh, from the outside of the vehicle first. I'm going to cover sound treatment, uh, and then uh, from there, I'll give you guys uh, under the hood what that looks like from a power wiring standpoint, and then we'll move into the vehicle, cover the amp rack, uh, as well as the rear subs, and then move forward, cover the front sub, and then the rest of the front stage, um, and what's uh, when you're in the driver's position kind of what's at your fingertips from a control standpoint and source standpoint so uh we'll start off with sound treatment uh, i'm gonna work my way from from front to back uh so um quick change on my truck that's not typical of at4s uh, i run michelin ltx defenders um the stock at4 tires are duratrac uh, i don't know if it's good year bfg but anyways they're uh, I, I never even drove on them. They're extremely aggressive from a tread pattern, uh, noisy as hell after 10K miles uh, from what everyone has told me and not something I'm looking to combat when trying to build an SQ system. Uh, so anyways, these tires, much more friendly tread pattern. They're still 33s, so they're still loudish for they're still a large truck tire, um, but certainly a step up from the Duratrax. Sound treatment, uh, working away again from front to back, is um, the entire liner of the front wheel well uh, is covered with Resonix Fiber Mat 45. Uh, there's a full layer, has made a great difference in uh, tire noise. Rear tires are not treated because it's literally physically disconnected in the bed of the truck, so I'm not really getting any advantage to doing that. But the front wheel well liners, as well as uh, this quarter panel area is uh, treated with some fiber mat as well, stuffed into there. The frame rails that run from here to here uh, also filled with some fiber mat and treated with some CLD because those do connect back to the firewall. I'm trying to eliminate resonance anywhere I can, any transfer of sound uh, into the cabin. Um, from there, the firewall itself in this location, kind of both sides of the uh, the drivers and passengers put well where I could reach while I was treating the front wheel wells. I slapped some CLD on the firewall, even though it's very, very stiff already. Um, figured why not while I'm there. So I threw a couple sheets there. Moving into the front doors, uh, which are kind of the primary location I think everybody focuses on first. Uh, outside of the door, it's treated with Resonix CLD. I would say probably 75 to 80% coverage. On top of that, um, I got a half a box of black hole tiles in each front door uh, with a heavy concentration right here behind the, the speaker itself. Helps a lot with back waves, actually does make quite a difference in response, uh, especially low end. Uh, really helped out driver's side mid base a lot in this truck. Um, passenger never really had too much trouble getting low, but it actually really helped with a lot of um, sub like 60 hertz output on driver's side, uh, which is before I ran a front sub was really important. Um, Anyways, moving my way inward on the metal door skin of the uh, the inner part of the door uh, has SoundSkin Pro kits. Would have done Resonix CLD for right now. It's doing fine. Um, one day I might swap that out, but not too worried about it right now. And then I have uh, 1087 uh, block-off plates. Uh, so the front doors are really well sealed. 
uh, for what they are. And honestly, I really don't have much issues at all. I play my eights a uh, hundred Hertz and above. So, uh, it's not fighting a ton of energy in there on the plastic door card. Um, that's, uh, the finished trim panel on the inside that's treated with about 60% coverage with Resonix CLD. And then the uh, fiber mat product, uh, the front doors have fiber mat 45 and the rear doors have fiber mat, uh, 25 rear doors are treated uh, the same way with the exception of not having block off plates. The SoundSkin Pro currently covers the access hole. Um, just haven't had a need. I used to have my rear fill. There's actually still Audio Frog GS62s in the rear. They're just not active right now at all. Um, I've moved my rear fill up to C pillars, which has been a lot more successful. But, um, anyways, uh, headliner. Uh, I dropped my headliner. And did about 60% coverage of CLD on the roof of the truck. There's literally nothing up there from the OEM. It's terrible. There's kind of nothing anywhere on, on this truck. For the price that this costs, it's kind of a joke. But I'm, I'd argue most people are probably not looking for an extremely quiet ride when they uh, buy a all-terrain version of a pickup truck. But anyways, headliner, 60% CLD. And then... Uh, nearly 100% coverage, I'll call it 95% coverage with fiber mat combination of both 45 and 25 depending on uh, the headliner uh, thickness availability because you're trying to keep that as uncompressed as possible and some locations just fit 25 much better than the 45. Uh, so huge improvement in road noise, better sub response, uh, probably the second thing behind doors because you kind of have to do doors if you have speakers in there uh, and it's just good for road noise. But uh, behind that headliner would be my... Uh, heaviest recommendation for folks who have trucks uh, i'm fortunate to not have a sunroof so i get even more kind of coverage with acoustic material um it's that created a especially at highway speed a massive difference uh, and then just kind of cleaned up sub response a, lot, a bit more controlled uh floor has some limited treatment of some cld uh it's probably 25 percent coverage um i i it, it's fine uh one day i may do a barrier down there but i doubt it um the truck's really quiet at this point. Uh, B pillars, C pillars have uh, fiber met 25 in there a little bit, not a ton, but enough to kind of treat some of the, the void areas. And then the back wall of the truck is fully covered in Resonix CLD and then some of the Resonix CCF7, um, which is a great decoupler. I use it against my amp rack, um, and you'll see that a bit closer once we get there uh, in the tour. Uh, so I think that covers all. Oh, uh, my back seat is out right now because uh, I want to show you guys. Um, I've basically bored out uh, all of the OEM foam that you see here that used to cover all the way across here. Uh, but in order to gain enough depth uh, to fit the amps, because usually the seat will sit like that. You guys can get some perspective on it. Um, and this depth is kind of what I have to work with better here um, to show you guys where the amp rack fits. Uh, and there's a lot back there. But anyways, the uh, in order to try to get some of that, um, the acoustic that I lost with removing that foam, uh, I treated with CLD and CCF where I can, uh, but made sure to maintain these OEM uh, flaps on the side because those seal up against the back wall and make a big difference in letting uh, sound come through to the front of the cab especially through the rear vents uh, but wanted to show you guys that i will uh, bring it back into the truck later in the tour so you can see what the back uh, finished product looks like that should cover sound treatment um yeah i think that's pretty much it so we can start on on some of the wiring now so i'm going to open up my hood here see if i can do this with one hand and again, the really only modification I made to this truck is a cold air. Uh, and then there's a programmer here that's really just to get rid of the dead uh, spot in the pedal. Um, but again, uh, wiring, there's kind of trying to keep this theme. You'll see most of my looming is similar throughout the truck. Um, tried to make even the install under the hood reflective of what the rest of the build looks like, which is clean, um, serviceable, thoughtful, and aesthetic. Um, so you're seeing two circuit breakers here. You have a hundred amp right here. Uh, what you're seeing that is, is actually, if you follow this wire here you see kind of down here and then it transitions to a different type of looming, which then goes down into there. 
uh, which and then I'll cut to a clip uh, of directly under my front bumper here. There is a Anderson connector that allows me to plug in a power supply. I have a 100 amp Zapco power supply that will run my entire truck's electrical system for competitions and meetups. Don't need to run the engine. And this is protection for that. Uh, it's also in case of an accident, for some reason, this whole front section gets pinched and now uh, positive and negative arc. I now have protection for the rest of the vehicle here in a uh, much more safe spot. Uh, and that'll trip that breaker in case of an issue uh, and prevent a fire. Uh, the 250 amp breaker you're seeing here, uh, per EMMA standards, uh, that is for the zero gauge that runs to the back of the amp rack. See if I can get a angle here and zoom in up for you guys. So right through the firewall there, there's a firewall bushing. I got everything is loomed and then split loomed. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, looks like my iPhone <laughs> decided to run out of storage. But uh, anyways, um, so that concludes the power uh, side of things under the hood. Um, and wanted to bring you guys through the amp rack, but from a quick routing standpoint. Uh, so it runs through the firewall. Then all uh, of my uh, zero gauge runs down the bed rail there and then comes up into the amp rack on the back wall. And then uh, as well as my high level signal uh, comes through there as well. That's all protected inside of the um, OEM rail section that's there. Uh, sorry, my truck's a little filthy. We had a huge thunderstorm last night and I haven't got a chance to completely clean it again. So uh, moving back to the amp rack area. So uh, I got a little light over here, uh, hopefully give some good illumination. Um, and this was my latest uh, iteration of what really kind of upgraded the truck in, in my opinion to the next level, uh, both from uh, an aesthetic standpoint, performance, and just really happy with the overall fit and finish. Let's see if I can uh, zoom out here. Oh, nope, not for 4K, I guess. Uh, so anyways, um, I want to bring you guys through the amp rack um, in detail here. I'm going to uh, come from both sides, but initially, uh, just to give you guys a quick overview, um, what's back here is uh, two Moscone Pro 530s. Uh, this one here, uh, that runs the uh, right side of the vehicle's uh, front stage and then right rear sub, which these subs are under here. Um, but that right uh, 530 runs uh, mid-base, which is bridged on channels one and two. Uh, the mid-range on channel 3, the tweeter on channel 4, and the sub on channel 5. Uh, they make, at any given point, can make up to 1,300 watts, roughly a little bit more than that. Um, so class AB on channels 1 through 4, class D on channel 5. Uh, incredibly efficient amps. Um, the same uh, is true of this, fi this 530 here, uh, except this runs the left side of the vehicle. And this 410 Moscone Pro, uh, channels one and two are bridged to the front sub, and channels three and four are left and right rear fill, respectively. Um, everything is four gauge uh, from the distribution block, which I'll get to from the other side. Uh, it is four gauge to every single amp. They are fused per EMA standard, so they're 125 amp fuse currently. And then uh, the Mac Daddy there, the, the Brax. DSP, uh, that is fused with a 15 amp fuse. Uh, so working my way from uh, right to left here, so I have some termination strips here. Uh, this allows me, it's from a serviceability, uh, which is still number one on this amp rack, is the ability to literally disconnect every single uh, speaker lead that I do have and quickly remove uh, the system uh, should I need to service it. Uh, every li every wire in here is, sorry about the shadow, uh, is labeled, uh, so I know exactly what it's for. Um, this is using 16 gauge OFC uh, speaker wire. Uh, each label has what speaker it is, and then it also has the corresponding DSP input letter, uh, just from a tracking standpoint. So if I ever need to do testing, I know what I'm looking for and, and what, uh, and essentially just takes a lot of the guessing, uh, when it comes to, uh, um, working on a system or trying to troubleshoot something. Uh, some notable things in here uh, from a cable management standpoint, super happy with how this all came out. Uh, might as well turn, I got some additional, well, I was gonna, I'll show you in a second. I got some LED lights that I also installed. Uh, you'll see uh, right here. Um, and I got 
some scattered throughout the truck. Uh, but uh, one of the DEMA members, uh, Daryl, aka Bob the Bird Turd, made me some really cool cable management clips. Let's see if I can get this to focus in here. Um, came out awesome. Um, they were designed to, to my needs. Uh, it's designed to stack ground uh, and power cabling. I have some split loom that contains all of my speaker wiring as well as my re uh, remote wiring. And then I have a different trough uh, that specifically is for the RCAs. So that way you get kind of this overall um, really parallel, clean, intentional design uh, meant to really keep everything organized. I think there's uh, only three zip ties on this entire amp rack. There's 72 machine inserts, but only three zip ties. Um, I don't know. To me, I like that. The zip ties are pretty much, you're going to see the one there and a couple on the, the speaker wires there. The rest of everything is literally within those clips. Um, that's it for the amp rack. Um, overall systems like 3,300 watts RMS. Um, more than enough for, for what I need. Uh, while we're back here, I'll show you guys my rear fill uh, before I drop down to the, the DSP. Uh, but up here, I built some uh, custom metal brackets, um, and those are inserted with machine uh, inserts here. Uh, wires all loomed, uh, and those are the Steg MS30s in Valakar pods. Uh, they're aimed uh, roughly at, at the opposite A-pillars up front, and really helped um, with the front stage. Really like this location. Um, gives a lot more room information. Kind of takes takes the the vehicle um it's like listening to a room as opposed to uh, like a fixed environment where i feel like a lot of a lot of systems really give you an awesome like wall of sound in front of you um properly done rear fill feels like music envelops you um it's hard to experience until you hear it and then immediately turn it off. And then you understand the effect of what good differential rear fill will do to your system. Um, it adds a little bit of stage width also when done correctly, but really adds to this kind of like enveloping feel, uh, especially on some tracks, depending how they're mastered or recorded. Again, kind of create some really crazy effects. Um, like the intro to Hotel California Live that everybody uses for demos radically different when you have a lot of rear fill versus none um just creates this huge amphitheater effect if you want it to um but it can also supplement it can also distract if done incorrectly but i've really liked what it's done to my system the last piece that i haven't gone over here uh which is this baby um this is what sparked this entire amp rack uh, overview, or really overhaul, I should say, is I came into an awesome deal on a Brax DSP. It's exactly configured how I wanted it to be, uh, which means from the input section, it had uh, two analog input cards and two digital input cards, which is great because I run uh, two options for digital sources because I run a FIO M11 Plus as my primary source, but I also have a... Um, topping D10S, which is my interface to get to my iPhone or anybody else's, uh, as well as other sources that comes in on a second digital input card um, that you see uh, those 290s there are both uh, digital coaxial inputs. Also have high level over here. Uh, the high level is purely uh, for my head unit for uh, phone calls, um, some navigation prompts. I don't really use navigation prompts, but uh, for phone calls, it's especially useful. Uh, again, everything is, is loomed back here, um, terminated, and I have a USB permanently plugged in that goes to my center console up front, uh, so I can. it's really easy to, to just plug in and tune. Uh, and then there's the conductor cable is here as well. And then this um, unit also has a Bluetooth uh, HEC expansion card. Only other piece I really haven't mentioned here, and it's kind of a perfect segue. Um, let me turn off, before I show off the lights here, bring you guys down here. Uh, perfect time to introduce the uh, MVPs from a time perspective of building my amp rack, which are the Resonex uh, solderless uh, RCA system. And fantastic product, super easy. Uh, creates a really awesome effect back here. Uh, especially when I, I turn the LED lights on in a second. And a giant time saver from an installation. Um, they are literally, 
I don't know. I think I did all my RCAs on this end in probably less than 10 minutes. And the rest that are up here, uh, which are, oh, there's 10 there. There's another uh, four there. Or there, excuse me. Uh, there's six, four, and another six over there. Probably another 10 minutes there. Uh, most of my time was spent cutting stuff to the right length. Um, so honestly, I think I, I have 60 hours into this amp rack and probably an hour total in RCAs. Uh, so if that gives you kind of perspective of, uh, of how good that system works, um, Nick, feel free to like talk to Nick. He'll send you some samples. It's a great product, uh, especially if you're uh, a shop. It's a huge time saver if you're trying to do custom RCA links. Uh, you can still loom and sleeve things how you want. But anyways, um, so I'm going to walk around the other side real quick, uh, turn the center light off, and give you guys a quick show of what the LEDs can do. All right, back to the other side now, and we got some lighting going on. Um, so quick before I kind of do some more lighting changes here, and I don't want the camera going crazy here. A um, couple of other items you're seeing uh, main distro block, zero gauge input on either side, uh, three amps on the top, 125 amp fuses, uh, 15 amp fuse for the DSP on the bottom. That is my remote distribution. Uh, so what you're seeing here, that's remote in from the Brax and then three uh, respective remote outs that go to each of the amps. Uh, again, um, everything back here is labeled. You're gonna see here, again, RCAs are labeled uh, with the corresponding uh, DSP letter input. Uh, same speaker wiring is all labeled. And a little close up on some of the clips here. But uh, LED lighting adds kind of a nice little effect to everything. Uh, I, I did RGB, um, so I can, there's some pre-selected colors here, but you could do virtually any color here. Uh, depending on the color I choose, it actually will desaturate that red uh, that you see in the looming. Uh, there you go, you kind of got the effect there. But when it's really dark, it actually goes to black. Um, but it's funny to see how kind of different, it was a little hidden trippy effect that I, I'm digging, but um, ended up better than I expected. A uh, quick little snippet here of what the DSP looks like. I put a little light on the back of the sub enclosure. Uh, so it kind of creates this like nice effect when the, the back seat is up and um, for kind of daily driving, it gives a little, little drama. Um, but overall, really, really happy with kind of the tidiness and cleanliness of how the amp rack turned out. Um, and it was worth the hours. Uh, moving on to rear subs. So one thing that's been kind of floating around here that you see here is a an offset for my headrest, uh, which is proportional uh, to the um, seat lift brackets that raise the back seat by two inches. Um, what that does is it allows me to use full-size subwoofers, um, meaning kind of a non-shallow classified sub. Uh, so you guys are seeing here my MTI Stage 2 box, which contains uh, two AudioFrog uh, GB12 D4s. They are wired to 2 ohm each. Um, each sub is amplified by each of the 530s, uh, respectively. Uh, that's directly behind them. So they're seeing, oh, plus or minus 700 watts, 750 watts, which is more than enough to, um, to make the GB12s boogie. Honestly, 500 watts is more than fine. Uh, they are in about 1.1 CF each. There's some polyfill in there. Uh, it's fully treated with CLD on the inside. And uh, I've tried a few different um, subs back here, more uh, the Morel Ultimo 12 uh, TIs. And they need more air, plenty of power, but need more air. Uh, great sounding sub, uh, but they still can't do what the GBs can do in this amount of air um, and application. They're just really 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 good especially at their price range um the there are some other options that i want to try like a c12xl both well i don't think the raven will do well here but the um the illusion if i can find a good pair of uh, matching ones um i would actually be interested in trying them but gb12s do fantastic in here uh they play down to like 14 hertz flat um not crazy authority, but they have authority down to the this probably the 1819 range where it wobbles my truck if I let it. Um, but for the most part, it's 
they're beautiful, that's just like kind of a pure SQ sub, and they can punch your head off if you want them to. Um, and just easy to work with, easy to tune, and just right speaker for the right application in the right installation uh, for what I need short of doing IB, which I'd love to do one day in another vehicle, but for a truck, this works really well. Uh, I do have a small uh, AT4 logo that you'll barely see there. Um, the whole box is kind of designed to be subtle and fit with the rest of the build. I'm sorry that my truck's a little dirty on the inside, but it does uh, fit in uh, well. And I do have, uh, that's not shown here, it's an XT90 connector, so I can quickly pop this out. And the LED lighting is just Velcroed there, so it's easy to uh, remove in case I need to take this thing out for uh, hauling something big on the inside of the truck or just service. But, all right. Uh, so I'm going to clean things up, put my back seat back in, be right back with you guys and I'll show you guys the front sub. Right. Now we move into the front of the truck. Um, so before I jump into the front sub front doors are the Focal Utopia AWMs, probably not going to see them in there, but, um, great mid base. Uh, I used to have them running 80, uh, up to 240. Now they run 100 to 240. Uh, ever since I got this front sub installed, but I'm trying to give you guys kind of a, uh, I usually do keep uh, a weather mat here uh, that usually does sit in there, but I wanted to show you guys for kind of an aesthetic purpose. Um, that covers everything carpet wise, and all you see is this kind of exposed uh, protective grill. Uh, so, front sub here has a removable cover, there's an access port there. Uh, more of a ventilation hole to let the HVAC come out because that's where my, um, I'll, I'll add a picture there, but that's where the ports are for the intake and the outtake of the heat and AC for the footwell region. So I wanted to maintain access for that uh, during daily use. But uh, so this grill here protects. So all I gotta do is pull it out. It's just press fit in there. Uh, again, has a heavy duty, uh, I don't know, it's probably like a 10 gauge grill and a, I don't know, just simple perch ply and that protects the sub for daily use uh which you're seeing now is an illusion c10 shallow sub uh this was my uh first project with um fiberglass on my own i had done some work uh with nick in his shop uh, let me get a better light for you guys to see here there we go uh, the probably the most humbling thing uh that i built on my own in this truck but honestly i did it in like three days even though it was like two weeks of prep um and really really happy with how it came out uh it's covered in an oem vinyl uh that matches really really close with what you guys see on the left here and the rest of the the truck uh it's the same thing that's used up on my mid-range pillar pods or my mid-range pods i should say and had enough left over and installed it here so for comps and meetups at least it's something nice to look at um, and it is secured with some stainless rib nuts in the front, uh, two M5 bolts, so it's not going anywhere. It's in 0.65 cubic feet roughly, and it's getting about just under 400 watts from the 410 and runs 50 to 100 hertz. It is incredible what this did to the completeness of my front stage. Um, again, when you're kind of sitting, just give you guys a perspective there. Um, what this did to my front stage sound wise, um, I was not expecting the focals were really good. Uh, but it was just like, it wasn't a speaker issue. It was just a, a cabin issue. I got a large center console, which is just terrible for mid base plus doors. Uh, so big issues around, uh, like 180 on passenger side and, uh, both under 70 and at 135, 140 on driver's side that just have giant cancellations. You can all pass them, just draws more attention to, to the issue. It doesn't fix anything. It makes your RTA look nice, but it doesn't actually fix what's going on. Um, but the front sub, even though it's only crossed 50 to 100, um, provides a lot of the information above that that has like like I said, it's, there's just so much more fullness from a, from a mid base standpoint. It's not bloated. It's full. It just has this, like, until you kind of hear it without it again, similar to rear fill, you kind of didn't realize what you were missing. 
Um, I heard some other vehicles that obviously have good mid bass, but uh, this is also to just like transform when I can hear it every day, what the effect of, of this does. Um, and just, it's great. Um, it's very musical. It's really low inductance. So it climbs high play. It can play up to like 250, uh, pretty much full from that position all the way down to like 26. Uh, it can push down to 20. I have a tune in here that runs the entire system with just that sub surprises the hell out of people. It doesn't have that crazy low end extension that the GB12 certainly had, but as a pure SQ system where you can get all of your information in the front, it's awesome. It's really, it's a really fun, like it's fast. It's, um, it's super transient and it just, it's a great front sub. Uh, it, like I've heard a few different ones and really, really pleased with what this does. Um, and can work in a few different applications. I'm fortunate to give it as much air as I have. Um, so it really has like a, a lot of kind of meat and potatoes when it comes to that like 50 to 70 range. It really does actually punch um, quite a bit. So uh, from there, I'm going to move myself over to the driver's seat, run you guys through source, and then finish up with uh, A pillars and, uh, and the mid range. And I'll see you guys on the other side. Now that I'm losing daylight and battery, um, sitting in the front seat here, you guys got a little preview of what's up there. Um, but wanted to show you daily source. Um, is it awake? Okay, there it is. Uh, this is the FIO M11 Plus ESS as my daily driver. Um, and I run this with Apple Music generally most of the time. Works really well. Um, super simple to use. I keep all my music offline, um, but it has all my playlists on here and artists. Um, so whatever it, it honestly works. Awesome. Uh, it is hardwired into my center console for USB power and then runs a RSD cables, custom three and a half to digital or three and a half to coax, uh, that plugs direct into my Brax DSP and native 192 fortunately with the Brax uh so when you get some of those really high res recordings uh it, it's not a ton difference 96 than 192 but um the FIO does a little better than the iPhone on some on some things uh with with more notably the 24 bit uh music um it it, it does a nice job up here I have a, a mount for my iPhone for daily driving uh, which I use uh, right now. It's connected via wireless CarPlay, but um, the only thing that I've uh, I've lost here is uh, my steering wheel steer, steering wheel volume. Um, but uh, what I do use for my master control here is the Helix conductor in a custom DIY mount. Uh, I had a Dima member help me with that. Ended up sanding it. It's made out of uh, some polycarbonate, which has been sanded oh, like seven, eight times, and then finished with SEM trim black, about six coats. So uh, this operates master volume. Uh, so I can, whatever, turn it up like that. Uh, click once. That's my sub volume. Can adjust my subwoofer level. Uh, this is to toggle uh, digital or toggle inputs in general, uh, but I can also toggle digital input types. So I have both optical for a topping D10S, which lives right under there, uh, or my FIO, which is the other digital input. And then lastly, on the fourth selection screen, I can choose uh, different presets. Um, so whether that's one that's just front sub or just rear subs or whatever I wanna do, uh, that conductor allows me to quickly switch between that. Um, that's pretty much it from a, a source standpoint. And before I run out of daylight here and the ability to talk and you guys see this clearly, um, in January of 2023, I got really lucky to spend a weekend with, uh, both Nick Apicella, who's shout out to him for being my mentor through, uh, literally everything, car audio and some things beyond. Um, I was able to work with him and, uh, Matt Kim, uh, probably two of the best fabricators in the car audio game in the last couple of decades and have them build me. These custom A pillar and mid range pods. Um, aesthetically, I'm extremely lucky uh, to have these as my own. Um, they're beautiful. 
Sorry about that, guys. I'm running out of storage. I didn't realize how much 4K 60 frames per second takes up on my phone. But very dramatic effect. Uh, they're just gorgeous. <laughs> and have waveguides uh, built for the tweeters. Um, covered in a headliner material that really closely matches the OEM. It's like an old Jaguar um, headliner. You can see there, it's just a really, really nice match, both in pattern and color. And then the mid ranges are a almost dead on match to the OEM vinyl. You can get a good effect right there. It's, a, it's very hard to tell the difference. Uh, what you're seeing for drivers, which I haven't alluded to here, are the Accuton uh, C30 AM tweeter and the C100 AM uh, mid range. Arguably the best automotive drivers in this category, um, in each of their respective categories that you can get. And they perform up to that really, I, I kind of the Brax DSP, the, uh, the unicorn level uh, of performance. Uh, they're aesthetically gorgeous. Uh, they fit the aesthetic of kind of what the pillars um, complement. And from a performance standpoint are just beautiful. Um, they are the most accurate, transparent, uh, crazy amounts of detail. Uh, if you let them drivers that you'll, you'll ever experience, you have to be almost prepared to listen to them because they give you so much information that you previously probably have not heard in a recording for better or for worse. Uh, cause it really does highlight kind of some of that, um, issues with mastering, uh, when you find music that is poorly recorded, it very much will reflect that. But on the inverse, when something is, is very well recorded, uh, it, it'll bring a tear to your eye. It gives you those goosebumps that you always seek when you're making upgrades in your truck. Uh, these do these do that on the daily for me. And I've had them uh, for some time now, uh, even though it's only months uh, for me, uh, for people who do know me, uh, months is a long, long time for me um, to keep a piece of equipment. Uh, but these are here to stay for the foreseeable future. Um, they just allow you kind of to do everything. Um, you can tune them any way you want. They don't really come with a sound signature. They're so neutral. They're so uh, accurate. And the, what they can portray when they're well-tuned, uh, the... The representation of music is so different and it's it's so real. It's so believable. Um, instrument size, uh, the ability to get locations. Um, when you couple those with the Brax, it's incredible. It really, it, it, it does some things I was not really prepared for car audio to do. It, I love them. Uh, so uh, I don't want to keep this too much longer. Um, but anyways, just a couple of overviews, uh, really from like a stage perspective, uh, ever since I put the Brax in, uh, and got my rear fill, oh, wow, sounded really Southern there. Uh, my rear fill dialed in with the Brax. Um, my stage used to be about here. Um, I, I, I plugged in the Brax, same tune, didn't touch anything. And my stage literally went there, uh, in, in terms of width, uh, from height. Uh, it used to be basically right here, just above my dash. And probably would land just about where that vent is uh, for my windshield. Same thing, plug in my Brax. My stage height goes from here, right there. Literally dead in line with my tweeters. Didn't touch anything. Can't explain why, but it just did that. Uh, and then depth uh, went out to my wipers. It was <laughs> a really weird thing. And then there's just so much more room uh, between uh, left, left center, center. And which is always a trouble area to try to get instruments to be able to discern what's kind of between here and here in your stage because it can all, it can get very clumped really quickly, especially if you don't have a lot of stage width this way. But uh, between the bracks and trying to hone in my tuning skills, and I know Nick will will do some magic stuff here in a week when he gets to tune it again. Um, I, I've just it continues to take steps forward in the right way, um, trying to make my decisions a little bit better, but. Uh, last things to cover really, uh, aiming, uh, tweeters are aimed at opposite B pillars. Um, and then the mid ranges do have a nice angle on them. Uh, this helped a lot in response, getting them up above the, the typical height of the dash has helped with a little bit of kind of comb filtering issues. Uh, and I get a lot more top end, um, specifically when they're laying flat in the same height of the dash, you run into a lot of issues around 2k. Uh, now they play clean up to almost four. 
uh, in this orientation without needing a lot of EQ, which is uh, is really nice to be able to, because that's where the tweets are going to get crossed here soon. They're, they're crossed at five now, but they can, um, they're going to go down to four here and in the next tune. So, um, which is nice because usually mid range, especially in a dash location needs a lot of EQ. Uh, in this case, probably get away with 10, 12, 15 bands, maybe. Um, so, uh, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'm going to include some photos here of the build process like I did last time, except with some of the updated information and feel free to leave a comment. What's your favorite part? If you got any questions, let me know. Uh, I'm sure I'll have another video at some point, but it'll be a while. Uh, but thank you guys for coming along on the journey. I know it's a long video, but I appreciate, um, everybody who's helped me along the way, everybody who's either given me a really cool idea or some inspiration, um, or just kind of flat out, you throw me a like here and there. That stuff keeps me going. And I really enjoyed this hobby. Excited to meet a lot of uh, folks at SVR um, and see how this uh, this rig stacks up against the, the big boys. But um, to me, it's about the, the journey and, and enjoying music and um, really enjoyed the, the two-year process to get here and, and feel like I'm close to kind of hitting that um, that unicorn level of what I wanted, uh, when, when I started, but appreciate it guys. Enjoy the photos and see you in the next one. Thank you.